the Paris Opera House stands as an emblem of artistry and elegance. Every brick and mortar has a story to tell, and every curtain that flutters speaks of countless performances and standing ovations. Yet the true allure lies not just in its towering presence but in the intricate weave of tales that echo through its grand corridors. Gone are the days of horse-drawn carriages pulling up at the entrance, depositing the elite of Parisian society in their finest attire, ready for an evening of music and drama. The Opera House is an oasis where reality mingles with fantasy, where characters come to life, their stories unfolding against a backdrop of opulence. Before we tuck you in, tonight, voyagers of the night sky, we have a small but crucial request. As your eyelids grow heavy, and the soothing tones of sleepy voyagers guide you to the realm of dreams. Remember the peace, serenity, and comfort that we bring to you every night, just as a lighthouse guides lost ships. In the darkness, your reviews help other restless dreamers find their way to us. By leaving a review and sharing your thoughts on your experience, you are reaching out to other insomniacs lost in the night, guiding them towards restful sleep. Take a moment before you drift away to click on the leave a review button on your podcast app. Help us extend our galaxy of tranquility to all those who seek the solace of sound sleep. And once you've done that, feel free to slip back under the covers of our sleep stories, ready to be whisked away on another sleepy voyage. Remember, your stars light the way for others. Every review, every rating helps us create a bigger, more beautiful universe of peace and rest. Tonight, we turn the pages back to one of the most enduring tales ever told within these walls. A story of love, passion, and the haunting allure of the unknown. The story may be set in an era of gaslights and grand ballrooms, but its messages resonate even now. Feel the velvety texture of the opera house. Seats. Imagine the dim glow of the chandeliers and hear the distant strains of an orchestra tuning. For tonight, this tale is not just one of Vantum and his muse, but of every soul that seeks acceptance. Embrace the ambience. Let your senses be captivated. And allow the story to cradle you into a serene reprieve. Every story is like an iceberg, revealing only a fraction of its grandeur above the water, while concealing the vast expanse Beneath, Gaston Leroux's The Phantom of the Opera 
is one such tale. On the surface, it appears to be a thrilling romance set in the heart of the Paris Opera House. However, dive a bit deeper and it unfurls into a poignant exploration. The tale is more than just a chronicle of love and obsession. It speaks of the yearning we all feel to be seen, to be accepted. The phantom concealed behind his mask symbolizes every person's hidden fears, insecurities, and dreams. His disfigurement isn't just physical, but emblematic of the internal scars many carry. Yet, acceptance isn't merely about acknowledging these wounds. It's about recognizing the inherent worth in each individual, irrespective of their imperfection. Christine, the beacon of hope in our story, exemplifies this. Through her actions, she teaches us the power of understanding and compassion. This isn't just a tale of a haunting voice and a masked figure lurking in the shadows. It's a reminder that beneath the layers of every narrative, there's an inherent truth waiting to be unveiled. And in this tale, the truth is simple yet profound. The beauty of acceptance can transcend even the deepest darkness. The Paris Opera House stands as an epitome of grandeur and artistic expression located in the heart of the city. Its architectural magnificence is a testament to the dedication and passion of those who envisioned it. Every evening, as the sun begins its descent beyond the horizon, the opera house is bathed in a gentle golden hue. The intricate carvings on its facade catch the light, shimmering softly, making the entire structure appear as if it's glowing from within. Its large windows and balconies reflect the radiant hues of the sky, blending oranges, pinks, and purples in a mesmerizing dance. From afar, one could hear the distant, harmonious blend of voices and instruments preparing for the evening's performance. The vast entrance, adorned with marble and glistening chandeliers, welcomes all with an aura of awe and reverence. Inside, velvet drapes and golden balconies create an atmosphere of opulence where every corner speaks of tales both old and new. Visitors often stop to admire the grand staircase, imagining the countless artists, dignitaries, and enthusiasts who have graced its steps. The echo of footsteps, the soft murmur of conversations, and the distant sound of a tuning orchestra create a symphony of anticipation. Yet, amidst the vastness of this architectural marvel, secrets lurk in every corner, whispering tales of passion, ambition, and longing. Every brick, every chandelier, 
and every seat in the grand hall has witnessed stories that have moved hearts, evoked tears, and inspired dream. As daylight fades and the opera house illuminates, it becomes not just a place of performance, but a living, breathing entity, echoing with the heartbeats of all those who have found solace within its walls. Christine Day was not born under the golden arches of Paris. She hailed from a quiet countryside where melodies of nature soothed her as a child. Her father, a talented musician, would often cradle a young Christine in his arms, filling her ears with enchanting lullabies. These melodies weren't just notes and rhythms. They were tales of mystical beings and secret worlds. One such tale was of the angel of music. This celestial being, according to her father, watched over gifted souls, guiding them in their musical journey. Christine, with every fiber of her being, believed in the existence of this angel. It was this unwavering belief that gave her solace when her father passed away. Finding herself amidst the grandeur of the Paris Opera House was both intimidating and exhilarating for Christine. Yet, in the echoing vastness of the opera, she felt a strange connection, a mysterious pull. Every note she sang, every melody she practiced, she felt an unseen presence. The whispers of the opera staff spoke of the phantom, but to Christine this presence was undeniably her angel of music. In her solitude, she would often sense gentle guidance, as if the angel were right beside her, nurturing her talent and mending her heart. This connection, invisible yet profound, would set the stage for a journey Christine could never have foreseen. It was a bond of faith, a testament to the stories we hold close and the mysterious ways they shape our lives. Christine's tale is not just about music and melodies. It's about belief, hope, the ethereal threads that connect our world to the unseen. The Paris Opera House, grand as it was, held countless secrets, and among them was the echoing voice of the angel of music, Christine Deye, a rising star with an ethereal voice began to hear soft whispers when the night painted the city in shades of mystery. Initially, these whispers were barely audible, like the distant hum of a lullaby. But with each passing night, the voice grew clearer. There was an intimacy in these lessons, a bond formed between the young singer and her invisible mentor. The voice was gentle, nurturing, and filled with a wisdom that seemed to span epoch. It corrected her when she faltered, and praised her when she soared, always pushing her beyond her limits, yet maintaining a tenderness that made each lesson 
feel like a sacred ritual, Christine bereaved by her father's passing, often clung to the tales of the angel of music he had told her as a child. These memories, combined with the nurturing voice, provided a comfort she desperately sought. It was as if the universe had sent her a guardian to watch over her, to ensure that her talent blossomed in the dimly lit corridors of the opera. Though no one else could hear the voice for Christine, it was as real as the opera's grand chandeliers or the applause that erupted after each performance. The lessons were not just about singing, they encompassed the very soul of music, the depth of emotion it could convey, and the transformation it could bestow upon its listener with every nocturnal lesson. Christine's voice matured, her confidence grew, and her belief in the angel of musics solidified. However, unbeknownst to her, these lessons were merely the prelude to a deeper journey, one that would unveil truths both haunting and profound. In the midst of opera rehearsals, in the hustle and bustle, there appeared a face from days long past. It was not the face of a stranger. Christine's eyes met his and a wave of memories came rushing back. This was Raoul, a childhood companion, a kindred spirit from days of innocence and carefree laughter. Once they had shared stories under the canopy of the stars, whispered secrets by the seashore, and danced in the meadows during the soft embrace of twilight. Years had sculpted Raoul, adding the grace of maturity to his once boyish charm. He now wore the demeanor of a viscount, yet beneath the layers of nobility, the same playful spirit peeked through. Their unexpected reunion at the Paris Opera House was not mere chance. It seemed like the universe's way of weaving old threads into a new tapestry. For Christine, Raoul's presence was a gentle reminder of simpler times before the shadows, before the ethereal melodies that beckoned her nightly. His voice, though deeper, still carried the warmth of those sun-drenched days, evoking a symphony of emotions in Christine's heart. But in the realm of the opera, where every note holds a story and every shadow whispers a secret, this reunion was destined to be more than just a rekindling of old memories. It was the beginning of a new chapter, one that would challenge Christine's heart, entwining her past with her present in ways she could never have imagined. Their paths had crossed once again, not by mere coincidence, but as if orchestrated by the very melodies that filled the air of the grand Parisian structure. Beneath the grandeur and the hustle of the Paris Opera House lies an entirely different realm. It's a place 
where few dare to venture, and even fewer return to speak of its mysteries, for this is the domain of the enigmatic and elusive phantom. Every corridor, every echo beneath the opera house tells tales of his solitude and genius. Christine, led by a voice both haunting and hypnotic, finds herself drawn into this maze of underground passages. Her heart races with a blend of fear and intrigue, the cold air chilling her yet awakening, a curious spirit. The path is dimly lit, the air thick with the musty scent of aged paper and old wood. One could imagine how the phantom has made a labyrinth of these underground catacombs, each turn holding its own secret. Soon the sound of rippling water reaches Christine's ears, and she comes upon an underground lake, shimmering and still. Here a boat awaits, seemingly untouched by time. The waters of this lake are dark and deep. This hidden world is an escape for the phantom, a sanctuary where he can be free from the judgment and prying eyes of the world above. Each object, each nook and cranny in this subterranean refuge speaks of the phantom's life and his unyielding passion for music and beauty. To many, this realm might seem lonely, even chilling, yet to the phantom it's a haven, a place where his artistry, unmarred by his appearance, thrives and flourishes. Christine's journey into this realm isn't just about discovering the secrets of the opera house. It's about unearthing deeper truths about acceptance, identity, and the lengths one might go to find a place of belonging. The further Christine goes, the more she realizes that the lines between captor and savior darkness and light might be more blurred than she once believed. Her exploration into the depths will lead her to revelations that challenge her perceptions and reshape the course of her life forever. In the heart of the Paris Opera House, lies a world unseen by most, a labyrinth of corridors and hidden chambers shrouded in darkness, yet illuminated by the occasional flicker of candlelight. Christine, lured by the seductive yet comforting voice of her angel, her footsteps echoed on the cold, damp stone floor, every step taking her further into the phantom's realm. On the other side of the lake stood an opulent chamber, adorned with velvet drapes, golden trinkets, and music sheets scattered all around. The heartbeats of anticipation filled the room, and there, behind a grand organ, he stood, his back turned to her. He continued to play a hauntingly beautiful melody. Christine, driven by 
a mix of curiosity and gratitude, approached him with soft steps. She reached out, fingers trembling, and pulled away the mask that concealed his face. For a split second, time seemed to stand still. Beneath the mask was not the face of an angel, but that of a man. Yet, in his eyes, there was a depth of emotion, a universe of stories, of pain, love, and a desperate yearning for acceptance. Christine's initial shock was palpable, but it gave way to a realization. This was the soul who had guided her. The face she saw was a testament to the struggles he endured, hidden away from a world that would never understand. It was a profound moment of revelation, where Christine understood that true identity went far beyond mere appearances, and in that silent chamber, two souls connected, stripped of pretense, standing at the crossroads of fear and acceptance. The streets of Paris buzzed with carriages, laughter, and the lively chatter of its citizen. Amid this backdrop, Raoul Vicomte de Chagny experienced from a distant memory of playful days by the sea. Christine Dehe had grown into a captivating presence in his heart. Their past was a tapestry of innocent memories. Childhood games shared confidences and tales of the angel of music Christine so dearly believed in. The Paris Opera House, though majestic and grand, had its share of mysteries and shadows. Raoul felt a burgeoning need to shield Christine from these enigmatic forces that seemed to entangle her. Each stolen moment they shared, whether in a quiet corridor or beneath the ornate chandeliers of the Grand Hall, their connection deepened. Their conversations were often punctuated by Christine's hesitations, her haunted glances, and an unspoken weight she seemed to bear. Yet, amidst this complexity, Raoul's intentions remained clear. He envisioned a world for them beyond the confines of the opera, where the songs of birds replaced haunting melodies, and daylight washed away lurking shadows. This vision was one of sunlit meadows, gentle breezes, and the kind of peace that only true love can bring. He hoped to offer Christine a sanctuary, not just of luxury and status, but one of understanding, companionship, and heartfelt acceptance. To Raoul, the value of acceptance was not just about embracing someone's strength, but also understanding their vulnerabilities and fears. It was about creating a haven where one could be their true self, free from judgments and the weight of past sorrows. He dreamt of mourning, watching the scenes gentle ripples 
of whispered secrets beneath starry skies and of a life where the echoes the present in this dream every gaze exchanged held a promise every touch was a reiteration of commitment and every shared silence was an ode to understanding and as days turned into night this dream was what Raoul hoped to make a reality for Christine and himself away from the looming spectre of the opera's phantom. The phantom, a mysterious figure hidden behind a mask of despair, found himself ensnared by the ethereal beauty of Christine's voice. It wasn't just her voice that captured his heart, but the soul behind every note, the spirit that resonated with his own wounded essence. His world had always been one of solitude, a realm defined by the reverberating notes of his compositions and the cold walls of his underground sanctuary. Yet, with Christine's arrival, his universe began to shift, and a new melody, one of longing and passion, began to play. He watched her, not as a mere observer from the shadows, but as a moth drawn irresistibly to a flame. Every time her voice soared through the halls, it felt as if it was calling out to him, bridging the chasm of loneliness that had surrounded him. But this love was not gentle or kind. It was a tempest, wild and consuming, driven by a desire to possess, to claim to own every fragment of Christine's being. He envisioned a world where they could be together, away from prying eyes, where their souls could merge in an eternal duet. However, with this vision came an insidious jealousy, a fear of losing her to the outside world, especially to the likes of Raoul. In his eyes, only he could truly appreciate the depth of her talent, the nuances in her voice, the stories her heart sang. But love, its purest form, it's about understanding, caring, and giving freedom. Yet the phantom's heart, scarred and yearning, struggled to discern this truth in his desperate bid to keep her close he inadvertently began weaving a web of intrigue and danger around christine and as this web grew tighter the lines between love and obsession started to blur the stage was set for a tale of passion, where boundaries would be tested and the true meaning of love would be put to the challenge. The phantom, that enigmatic maestro from the shadows, had composed an opera, not just any opera, but a magnum opus capturing his intense emotions, his longing, and his deepest desires. He envisioned only one voice to give life to his composition. Christine, with her ethereal voice, was the key to making his musical masterpiece. 
resonate with the souls of the audience. This wasn't merely an invitation. It was an insistence, a deep-seated demand from a soul starved for acceptance. He saw in her the validation he so fervently sought, and acceptance that had eluded him his entire life. With the announcement made, the opera house was a buzz. Whispers filled every corner, every dressing room. Anticipation hung thick in the air. Could Christine rise to the challenge presented by this unparalleled composition? Would she be the beacon of hope that would pierce through the phantom's shadowy whirl. The stage was set, the notes tuned, and the chandeliers gleamed brighter than ever. All eyes and ears were now poised towards that center stage, waiting for Christine's voice to rise, filling the vast expanse with the phantom's haunting melody. It was more than just a performance. It was a manifestation of dreams, desires, and the timeless quest for acceptance. In the grandeur of the Paris Opera House, an unexpected silence settled an electric anticipation coursed through every spectator, actor, and singer. Christine Daae stood center stage, her voice weaving its ethereal magic, drawing everyone into the spellbinding world the Phantom had crafted, unbeknownst to most. In the shadows, the phantom watched, pride and possessiveness, evident in his every gaze. A discordant note, unintended, pierced the silence, immediately drawing attention. Eyes darted around, trying to identify the source of the disturbance, but it was what followed that truly brought fear. The magnificent chandelier, the heart of the opera house, began to tremble. It swayed ominously, reflecting fractured lights, creating an unsettling dance of shadows. The audience gasped, panic and confusion rippling through the once mesmerized crowd, among them Raoul, feeling a weight in his chest, instinctively knew that the phantom was behind this chaos. He rose from his seat, determination etched on his face, ready to confront the shadowy figure that threatened the safety of all present, and, more importantly, Christine's well-being. On the stage, Christine froze, sensing the dangerous turn of events and recognizing the hand of the man from the depths. A high-pitched scream echoed as the chandelier plummeted, only to be stopped mere feet from the ground by a mechanism unseen. The message was clear. The phantom had control. Silence reigned once more. A face off was imminent. A confrontation that would test boundaries, unravel truths, and challenge the very essence of acceptance. The dimly lit catacombs of the Paris Opera House 
whispered secrets of its own. These winding, ancient pathways had become the very heart of the opera, hiding its most enigmatic resident. There, amidst the cold and silent corridors, Christine Day found herself facing not just the phantom, but also a reflection of her own soul. For it was in this very moment she was confronted with a decision that would change the course of her life. The phantom, with his mask hiding scars, both physical and emotional, presented a choice his heart in exchange for Raoul's life. The gravity, the decision, weighed heavily on her. To choose, Raoul was to embrace light, love, and the familiarity of the world above. To choose the phantom was to descend further into the shadows, but also to acknowledge the profound depth of his loneliness and longing. But perhaps it wasn't about making a choice between two men, but rather understanding profound nature of acceptance, acceptance of one's past, of the deepest scars, and of the love that binds souls in mysterious ways. For the phantom, acceptance was a foreign language, having been hidden away from the world, shunned for his disfigurement. For Christine, acceptance was a lesson waiting to be discovered in the echo laden chambers beneath the opera, and as she stood there, heartbeats echoing louder than any operatic note, she realized that love wasn't just about passion or possession, it was about seeing beyond the masks we wear, understanding the pain beneath and reaching out with a tenderness that transcends physical appearance. Her choice wasn't between the known and the unknown. This moment, a microcosm of life's greater challenges, asked of Christine what it asks of all of us, to see with our hearts, not just our eyes. In the dimly lit catacombs beneath the opulent Paris Opera House, the air was thick with tension. Each echo seemed magnified. Each shadow deepened, painting a canvas of uncertainty and palpable anticipation. Here Christine stood her face a portrait of fear and resilience, her eyes fixed upon the figure before her, the phantom, the genius maestro of these hidden labyrinths, was no longer a shadowy legend, but a deeply tormented man, revealed in all his anguish, his face marred by birth, had become a mask of his own making, a shield against a world that had only shown him rejection and derision. His gaze, though fierce and almost wild, bore traces of a deep, unspeakable sorrow, a sorrow born not just of physical disfigurement, but of a lifetime of isolation and unrequited yearnings. 
His demand was clear, a cruel choice to make for anyone, let alone a young woman caught in the crossfire of two contrasting worlds. Yet, amidst this darkness, a flicker of understanding ignited within Christine. Perhaps it was a memory of her father's teachings, or the countless tales of love and redemption she'd heard as a child. With each step she took towards the phantom, and then in an act that spoke louder than any area she had ever sung, Christine did the unexpected. She kissed him, not a kiss born out of passion or obligation, but one of profound compassion and understanding. For in that singular moment, Christine saw past the scars, past the tales of terror, and into the heart of a man yearning for acceptance. Her gentle gesture was a silent sermon on the power of understanding, on looking beyond the superficial and finding the humanity that exists in all. In the world of opera, where voices convey emotions and stories unfold in harmonies, Christine's act was a symphony of acceptance, for acceptance is not just about understanding differences, but embracing them. And sometimes, a simple act, a gesture of compassion, can be the most powerful note in the entire composition, in the intricate tapestry of human existence. Judgment is an ever-present thread. From the earliest days of society, standards were set, silently telling us who to be and how to act. The Paris Opera House, grand in its stature, was not just a haven for music and art, but also a reflection of these societal expectations. Actors and singers would don their masks, not just for the roles they played, but also to shield themselves from the world's gaze. Yet, beneath these masks lay stories, emotions, vulnerabilities, entire worlds unknown to the naked eye, saw beyond the scars, beyond the stories that had been told about this mysterious figure lurking in the shadows. In that profound moment, her actions were not dictated by society's conventions or expectations. Instead, she was guided by a deeper sense of understanding, one that pierced through prejudices and preconceived notions. Christine knew the pain of being misunderstood, of having a gift that was both a blessing and a curse. But more than that, she realized the universality of the human desire to be seen, to be known, and to be accepted. Her compassionate kiss was not a romantic gesture, but an act of profound empathy. It was a testament to the power of acceptance, an acknowledgement of the phantom's humanity 
despite his perceived flaws. Such acceptance requires a depth of character, a strength that often remains hidden, waiting for the right moment to emerge. In today's world, it's easy to pass judgment, to see only what's on the surface. Christine's gesture reminds us that beneath every exterior is a story, a journey, and a soul seeking connection. True acceptance doesn't mean agreeing with or endorsing someone's action. Rather, it's recognizing their inherent worth as a fellow human being, regardless of their imperfections. It's a challenge to all of us to look deeper, to strive for understanding, and to approach others with an open heart. For in that space of openness, miracles of connection can occur and bridges can be built where once there were only walls. May we all aspire to the level of understanding and acceptance Christine showcased, transforming not just individual hearts, but the world around us. Imagine the vast, echoing chambers of the Paris Opera House. Every nook and corner holds a secret, every shadow, a whisper of tales long gone, each golden beam that graces the walls, paints a history rich with passion, music and love. Feel the cool marble floors beneath you and sense the lingering notes of operatic areas that have permeated these walls. Envision the grandeur of the main hall with its opulent chandeliers and intricate designs, the soft rustling of ball gowns and the muffled conversations of a bygone era might echo faintly in your ears. Below the serene underground lake awaits its still waters reflecting the dim candlelight. This lake is a sanctuary, a world separate from the one above where reflections dive deep and mysteries unravel. Picture a lone boat silently gliding over the water, steered by the pull of music and fate. The beauty of this world is undeniable, yet it's a beauty tinged with longing Sorrow, take a moment to absorb this place. The Paris Opera House, in all its complexity and charm, let it serve as a reminder of the stories it has seen, the emotions it has evoked, and the lessons it holds. Remember that Every structure, every tale, every soul has layers waiting to be explored. And, just like the Opera House, our hearts, too, have chambers filled with memories, dreams, and desires, understanding them, accepting them and finding peace within them is the journey we all embark upon. Hold on to this feeling 
this deep connection with a world so full of emotion and meaning let the essence of the Paris Opera House guide you tonight, wrapping you in a cloak of acceptance and tranquility. May it lull you into the sweetest of dreams, where acceptance reigns supreme and love is the universal language. Begin by focusing on your breath. Feel the coolness of the air as you inhale. Sense the gentle warmth as you exhale. Imagine each breath as a gentle note in the vast symphony of the Paris Opera House. With every inhale, draw in the serene stillness of the underground lake where the phantom's boat floats. And with each exhale, release any tension just as the notes fade into the echoes of the Grand Opera Hall. In the depth of your mind, see the vastness of the auditorium, its velvet curtains and golden balconies. Let the peace of that space envelop you. Breathe in acceptance. Feel it filling every space in your lungs, every cell in your body. Now exhale doubts, judgments and masks. Let go of any weight, any shadows lingering in your heart. Imagine the gentle touch of Christine's compassionate. Feel its warmth, its understanding, its essence of true acceptance. Let it cradle you, comfort you, lulling you deeper into tranquility. You are safe here, wrapped in layers of understanding and peace. Allow the gentle rhythm of your breath to become the softest of lullabies, each breath drawing you closer to the embrace of sleep. Rest now, allowing the stories of the night to become dreams and let acceptance be the pillow upon which your head rests. Drift, float and sink into the tender realm of dreams where the tales of love and acceptance cradle you through the night. The stories of the Paris Opera House and its enigmatic phantom have been whispered through time, each echo revealing layers of pain. Christine's embrace of acceptance, even in the face of profound fear and uncertainty, offers a light in the shadows. It reminds us that every heart, no matter how masked or hidden beyond the grandeur of chandeliers and haunting melodies, the true essence of our tale is about seeing beyond facades. Each one of us carries melodies and memories intertwining in a dance of emotions. Yet, it's the moments of understanding, the instances where we truly see another soul that compose the most beautiful symphonies of our lives. 
May the harmonies of acceptance guide you in your own journey, illuminating pathways that once seemed enshrouded in darkness. Sleep gently, embraced by the knowledge and remember as dawn breaks the stories and lessons from the Paris Opera House remain with you. Until we meet again in another tale, embrace the world with an open heart and let acceptance be your guiding note. Dream deeply and find peace in every story's embrace.